And on today's show, how to create productive referral relationships with CPAs and attorneys. Part five of this week's series on acquiring high value clients through referrals and introductions with president of Referral Coach Academy, Bill Cates. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial economist and contributing author to Innsmark, Life Specs, and Backroom Technician. Let's get down to business. Welcome to day five, Bill. Thanks, Steve. Good Bill, to be we're, here. we're in the holy grail now. We're we talking are. about getting referrals from the fiduciary, <laughs> <laughs> the fiduciary market. And I have to say, you remember when you think about this, this is a place where everybody wants to play. Mm -hmm. And I've never seen one segment of the whole financial community that is so almost, I would use the word, impenetrable. Mm. And it's difficult. So when you say, hey, we're going to talk about referrals and getting them from CPAs and attorneys, mm -hmm. I'm all over that. And our audience is probably sitting there saying, how do you do that, Bill? Yeah. Well, my guess is that everyone watching this show, Steve, has had this experience. You meet a CPA or an attorney, you take them to lunch, you go to their office, you learn about their business, you tell them about your business, you give them a couple referrals thinking that the law mm -hmm. of reciprocity will kick in and yeah. they'll refer someone back to you and you're still waiting, mm -hmm. right? When I do a live training or seminar or speech, a lot of hands go up. So giving an attorney or a CPA referrals doesn't necessarily make you referable. We have to understand what's going on in the world of, of CPAs and attorneys. So why are accountants and attorneys reluctant to provide referrals to others? They're afraid you're gonna mess up the relationship that they already have. They're very risk adverse people. They're afraid you're gonna screw up the relationship they already have with their client. And so they're very risk adverse. So everything we do in, in meeting and building a relationship with a CPA or attorney to get referrals and introductions is all about mitigating that risk. It's all about building trust. And just because you give them referrals isn't gonna necessarily mm -hmm. do that. And so uh, the first thing we need to do is prepare, is get ready to have this conversation mm -hmm. Some advisors come on too strong. They're excited about the work they do, and they go, hey, you know, I could help your clients, and, and look salesy, and it turns mm -hmm. those folks off. A lot of other advisors don't have a process in place to stick to it over time to finally earn that trust and earn their business and earn those relationships. When we're talking about this, you mm -hmm. say be prepared. Uh, you know, right. again, I, I, it sounds so simple, but I think many times we believe this in the spontaneity of the moment, somehow we'll be you know, blessed with a revelation on how to speak to these people. Yeah. And these people are very thoughtful. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think image on the first contact is pretty yeah. big, whether yeah. it's telephone, email writing, or you even get blessed with getting a in, you know, right in front of an interview. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so when I'm looking at this, because I've seen this in some of your books, and again, I, just to remind everyone, uh, out on Amazon.com, you can get Bill's book, Get More Referrals Now. Don't keep me a secret, and the other book beyond referrals, just right. to keep That's it on your a new mind. One. Uh -huh. And I, 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 I want to be prepared, and they are not the same mindset as the rest of us in the advisor world. Right. They're right. just not right. And if you're prepared, they will see that you're prepared. So we'll go through it real quick. So first of all, you got to decide the model. Is it revenue sharing? Does your broker dealer have a situation where you can actually do that? Is it going to be reciprocal referral, which is a common model, but it's limited because because how many CPAs can you feed with referrals? Mm -hmm. The best model is the advisor of choice. I know advisors who have 20, 30 CPAs feeding them a continual flow of referrals based on this advisor of choice. And we'll get into that as we go. Make sure you're very, very clear and succinct and confident in how you articulate your value. What you do, who you do it for, how you do it, why you do it, what makes you a little bit different. The CPAs, they may not ask you this mm -hmm. question, but they wanna know the answers to this. Learn about their world interview CPAs and attorneys, read their industry publications, conduct, conduct internet research. When, when I show up and you're a CPA, I wanna have a sense of the world of CPAs, what the challenges are mm -hmm. that CPAs are having so I can have a, a higher level, more intelligent conversation mm -hmm. because I have a sense of who you are and I'm not intimidated by you. And so then I can bring that to the conversation and finally you know, meet them in the right way. What's the best way to meet a CPA or attorney? Introduction from your client. Either you want to have a coordinated effort that you knowing their CPA or attorney will help you serve them better, which is usually the case, or a professional introduction. But that is the best way to meet CPAs. Now you can meet CPAs at networking and business events. If you meet a CPA or an attorney there, good chance they're in a growth mode. They're there because their managing partner told them they have to be there to bring in clients. Mm. So that's great. So you can commiserate together about client acquisition and grow together. It happens mm -hmm. a lot. 
Estate planning councils are certainly a way. You have to be very careful there because you have to take mm. a long-term approach. And then educational programs for CPAs and attorneys, continuing ed. The mistake I found with most advisors around CE programs for attorneys and CPAs is they put on the programs expecting magically these CPAs will then want to have a relationship with them when they're just coming for the CE credit. Mm -hmm. They don't have any method of following up, of being appropriately proactive, and so this usually falls short. Primary way to do it is through the clients that you already have. Now, when we're looking at this, and I just want to close out our segment, mm -hmm. when I'm looking at this, because uh, I've seen people do CLE and CPE, mm -hmm. and I have done it myself as well, and I'm trying to look for the how can I present myself to another sector of our business, which is not the same as ours? Right. And they are looking us over with a lot more scrutiny. Yes. Do you have any kind of like maybe a first go-to thought before we go to the break? Yeah, one of the most powerful things you can do with a, a, an attorney or an accountant to get referrals for them is to make sure they clearly really understand your value proposition. And what a lot of advisors will do, will take a CPA or an attorney and say, I want to I want to run you through our initial process. I want to, I'm not expecting you to be a client, but I want you to get a sense of, of, of our value proposition. Mm -hmm. And so then I put you through it, and you get a sense of that, mm -hmm. and then you get to really know my world. Now you become an advocate for the work I do. It can't be a surface level. We have to formalize this relationship, and you have to really understand my value proposition. Well, when we come back from the break, we're going to talk about the uh, three-phase approach to creating productive relationships. But I have to say... I doubt very much that the majority of our audience has this written down. They know what their value proposition is and how to talk about it, mm -hmm. which I think is a really big deal. Yep. And I think that's it's one of those times when you're sitting on Christmas or some holiday, and that's the time you just need to start crafting this out. Yep. We'll be right back after the break. It's not how much money you make for your clients. It's how much money they get to keep, especially in retirement. But retirement income could cause Social Security benefits to be taxed. One tax advantage alternative is life insurance designed as a non-modified endowment contract that can generate tax-free income without taxing Social Security benefits. These contracts offer differing funding options depending upon your client's risk tolerance. For more information on how life insurance can be part of your retirement planning, just email me at steve at downtobusiness.tv. Brought to you by Ash Brokerage, the practice enhancement company. Well, welcome back to our second segment. Of course, we're with Bill Cates. Bill, we're talking about our three-phase approach mm -hmm. to creating productive relationships. And I'm always into, I like, you know, I'm a dutiful guy. I like three things. <laughs> right. I want, what's number one, number two? Right. Walk me through this because I'm into not breaking formula. And this is one of the things I want to keep recommending to our advisors. When I have professionals like Bill in, I really want us to not get cute and tailorize this or customize mm -hmm. it too much. I kind of want to do his way and, and not break the formula. Walk yeah. us through. I think the formula is important. We can, we can work the formula in a way that's natural and authentic to us. That's the key, right? So service to your client in common. In other words, you're meeting CPAs and attorney through your clients. That's the most powerful way to do that. So that's a, a voicemail that'll get returned. If I say, hey, Steve, we have a client in common in George, and I, I know that we, you know, by us knowing each other, we'll be able to serve George better. You know, please give me a call or whatever. That's a call that'll get returned. And so the first phase is how can you and I, CPA or attorney, knowing each other, serve our client better? Now that may just be a piece of the first appointment. It may not be everything, but that's the, that's the approach. That's where we're coming from, is service this client better. Now one of the things we can do is get written permission from our clients to CC the CPA or the attorney after, let's say, a review meeting. Mm -hmm. So we do a summary letter which is always a good idea, then we, then we send it to the client. We also CC the CPA or the attorney getting written permission to do that. Now the CPA or attorney really is let into the work we're doing, and, they, and the work we do has tax consequences. So that's really important, especially mm -hmm. with the affluent clients. So that's phase one. Phase two is service to the CPA. Let's learn about that CPA's practice or the attorney's practice. How can we help them? Can we contribute compliance approved material to their newsletter? Can we do joint seminars or can we do a seminar for their, for their partners? How can we bring value to their world? If we're particularly good at marketing, mm -hmm. uh, how can we help them get better at marketing? Mm -hmm. Can we refer, refer them to other product services? How do we serve the CPA? Mm -hmm. And then the third step is to start creating referrals. And the mistake I've found with most financial professionals is they try to go here too quickly, first of all. They haven't built a trust. And they don't really talk about it. They don't really formalize the relationship. So 
you've got to educate the CPA on who you serve the best. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about how you get introduced. Now, the best way to get introduced to a CPA is in his or her office. So let's say you're the CPA, I'm the advisor, client walks in, CPA's client, I'm here, I'm part of the team. That's a mm -hmm. done deal. Mm -hmm. Now, some CPAs and attorneys will do that, some won't. What we don't want is a CPA or attorney just creating word of mouth for us, just talking about us. We want a connection made. So talk to the CPA mm -hmm. about this. What is it going to look like? Uh, how you and then and then create some benchmarks. Now, good chance is that that your the CPA or attorney is going to, especially CPAs, are going to be able to give you more referrals than you may be able to give them. Make sure expectations match, that they're clear mm -hmm. on that. And by the way, with attorneys, not just estate planning attorneys, they aren't always the great sources of referrals. Attorneys that have money in motion, right? Uh, uh, matrimonial divorce attorneys, uh, proper, uh, injury and personal injury attorneys, uh, where there's money in motion, mm -hmm. those can be the best attorneys to uh, have a relationship with. And then receive referrals in the best way. Keep them in the loop. Very important that when anyone gives you a referral, you keep them in the loop. You let them know what's happening and you say thank you in a certain way. Now, you don't necessarily send mm -hmm. a gift to a CPA mm -hmm. or attorney. To clients, you can't. But you take them to lunch once a, once a quarter, right? Mm -hmm. You go to a ball game if they're into sports. You, you say thank you. You nurture the relationship. So it grows into that business friendship. And it's not just a reciprocal referral relationship. And bottom line, Steve, is you've got to formalize a relationship. Most advisors try to wing it when it comes to meeting CPAs mm -hmm. and attorneys. And they, ex like I said earlier, they expect that they, if they give the attorney a referral, the law of reciprocity will kick in. Well, let me tell you something. CPAs and attorneys, they were born without the reciprocity gene, mm. right? So they understand it, but they're risk adverse. It takes time to build that relationship. You said one thing that I have found to be true. I've been, mm -hmm. I've been teaching at the uh, CPA, uh, uh, our local, I mm -hmm. have in the past, mm -hmm. and uh, r really had very good uh, experience and success. I have that one thing you just said, though, on the marketing, I, I do believe that could be a segue into mm -hmm. CPA and attorneys because they're not really good marketers. They're right. They're very, not, and, and let's accentuate that online marketing, even worse. Right. So I think there's an opportunity there with some of the things. If we're having success in social media, if we're having success in video, these are areas where we can now start to extend mm -hmm. a little bit of gravitas mm -hmm. and see if we can gain their they're kind of, co let's let's do this together yes. as a partnership. Knowing that their styles are a little different. So mm -hmm. where you may feel comfortable being proactive in a certain way, they they won't go quite as far as you might go, but mm -hmm. absolutely they need, to, they need to learn how to be proactive. And many of them want to be. They have an old school thinking that it's not appropriate to be proactive, mm -hmm. but now we see CPAs and attorneys marketing all the time. Well, Bill, I thank you so much for being on our show all this week. This series has been great. That's all the time we have for today. Remember, before moving forward with any of the ideas on our show, always consult your tax advisor, legal counsel, or your broker-dealer compliance officer. Missed an episode? Just go out to our video archives. And remember, you could be wiser as an educated advisor. I'm Steve Savant. We'll see you next week.